Okay, we've talked about five things that affect intonation. Assuming that we've, we've got a good room temperature, we've got a good lead pipe angle, we're using good air, our hand is in the right place, and everything is functioning as it ought to, uh, how do we get in tune with the tuner or with our colleagues in band? Uh, the brass instruments all pretty much function the same. Um, if our pitch is sharp, it means our instrument is too short. So we have to lengthen the instrument or pull the slides out to find good pitch. Um, also, if our instrument is too flat or too long already, then we've got to push something in. Um, we talked about how to figure out what the slides do, so let's talk just briefly about, on the horn, which slides you need to do for what. If I'm playing notes um, on the F horn alone, and they're sharp, I'm going to pull out the slides on top here that correspond with those valve fingerings. If I'm playing uh, notes on the B flat side of the horn or with trigger, on the back side, you can see that the B flat horn, I'm kind of pointing into it here, it's, it's uh, the, the smaller version of these slides just underneath. Um, those slides need to be pulled out or pushed in depending on how far away from A440 you are. The main tuning slide does everything. So what we want to do first um, is tune the F horn to the B flat horn. So the way that I have students tune their horn is real simple. Push everything in. Let's make the horn as absolutely short as possible. Then I'm going to find notes uh, that the B flat horn and the F horn share. One note that they share, for example, is B natural. So I'm going to play B natural on the F side. And then I'm going to play it on the B flat side. And I'm going to go back and forth between those two notes. And I'm going to move those two horns to be in tune with each other. So I'm, in essence, tuning the B flat horn and the F horn. We have two horns in one here. I'm going to get those two horns in tune with each other first. I'm going to move all the slides on the F horn and the B flat horn and the valves to get in tune with each other. Then I'm going to take the whole instrument and move that in tune with the tuner or the band or where I am, and I'm going to use the main tuning slide to do that. Now, one question you might have is, okay, I've done that. Now, why do I even have these other various slides? Some horns have extra slides up here. If I've done what you said and I tune the instrument to itself and then to the whole band, well, then why do I need those slides? Those extra slides, the additional F slide or the additional B flat slide that you may have, those are there just for extra detailed tuning, extra nuances. If you have a certain note, for example, that uses the trigger. Um, you can't use any of these slides to tune the trigger because uh, none of these slides affect the trigger. Some horns have an additional B flat slide just for the trigger or just because uh, certain sections of your B flat horn you, you want to have a little bit lower. Um, a lot of times the partials, uh, you may need to change a certain partial. They are in essence just for additional tuning purposes. Um, that's basically how we tune the, the horn always knowing that there are variables. Where you are in the chord, do I have tonic? Do I have the fifth? Am I playing the major third? Is that particular valve combination sharper than something else? There are all kinds of things that affect intonation, but remembering how to use the slides can certainly help quite a bit.